This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so um, just to begin, um, I will be asking everyone an icebreaker question. So um, if everyone could just write in the chat below, um, if you could just name one opportunity about this current lockdown situation. Um, and um, yeah, we'll just be listening and reading out your comments as you write them out. Okay, we've received one response. Um, getting an extra hour in the morning to sleep in, do yoga, make coffee and have a nice breakfast. Yes, that is definitely one opportunity. So not having to wake up a whole hour early just to travel to work. Yeah. Chance to take stock. Um, to spend time with the family. We've had another one, no commute, learning to knit and spend time with family. Most definitely. So a lot of people are saying spending time with family, which is um, definitely a huge opportunity, especially when before the lockdown, it may have been so busy. You know, our lives must have been, you know, everyone has their own thing to do. And now that everyone is at home, you know, we do have that extra time to spend with our families. Um, we just learning received to another knit. Sorry, we just had another one, spending time with family and the chance to focus on self-care. Most definitely. So um, with self-care, um, again, our lives could get so busy sometimes that we just forget to take care of ourselves. So we do have the extra time to just take a step back and just have that self-care and that focus on ourselves for a bit. And um, we just received another response, cooking more in the day. Hello? Hello? I think I'm having some technical issues at my end. I actually can't hear anyone. So um, maybe if one of the other organisers can um, read out some of the answers that are coming through. Hi Delia, it's Sarah. Um, so we've had a few more things coming through about making meals with Grand, um, a granddaughter and being able to teach her that washing up can be fun and not a chore. So um, having the time to actually have fun with things that potentially are normally um, another job to do. I think Melissa's, um, I think Melissa's the one who's having the connection issue. So. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, Shall I continue reading out the other answers while we're waiting on Melissa coming back? Yeah, that would be good. Um, okay, let's have a look and see if we've got any more. Okay, so this is a really good one. Um, being able to Wi-Fi for the first time. Oh, work from home, sorry, not Wi-Fi. <laughs> work from home for the first time. <laughs> um, okay. Um, okay, let's go down. Um, spending more time with cats. And I think that's all we have for the moment. Yeah, okay, brilliant. Um,
Right, okay. I think Melissa's starting to come back now. Um, it's a shame it's happened right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Oh, somebody else. Hey. Yeah, somebody else has said, um, making more effort to FaceTime far away friends and family and be in touch with them. Um, I think we've all been doing that. That's uh, been a good one. Right, okay, we're just seeing if we can get somebody else to do the presentation now. Okay, um, while we're waiting, I've just had another answer. Um, not commuting and eating lunch is saving loads of money. <laughs> I like that one. Um, hi everyone, I apologise for my internet. Um, okay. Would I be able to share my screen again? I think your previous one is still showing. Um, let me see. still seeing your screen Melissa um, it's on the icebreaker slide um, for some reason it's showing that that's not being presented I'm gonna turn I'm going to try something <laughs> we apologize everybody here we go right I'm making you an organizer again there we go <laughs> thank you Sarah Okay, so um, we will go back to the lethargy cycle. So um, due to this current lockdown situation, we may be finding ourselves stuck in this lethargy cycle, which is this current diagram being presented. So if we start on the left hand side where there is an image of the earth, this is representing all the negative environmental influences that we are currently surrounded by. So we are um, always being, we are literally hearing all this negative news about the virus, how fast it's spreading, how many people are dying from the virus, um, how long the lockdown is going to be extended into. So all of these things are um, a lot of negative, um, I guess, there's so much negative news that um, it could make us feel that our environment is unsafe. So um, because of this, we may actually end up feeling quite powerless among other feelings of, you know, feeling quite anxious, scared, low in mood. This may actually lead us to feel quite demotivated and because of feeling very, very demotivated, we may actually end up not really doing anything during our day. And as a result, we may end up actually feeling very guilty about ourselves for not only feeling all these negative feelings, but for not really doing anything much during our day. And due to this, this may actually lead us to panic about our future. So this could be regards our health, the health of others, um, you know, the impacts that this um, lockdown of the virus could have on others um, about maybe um, our future, our jobs, our studies, it could be anything. And because of this feelings of guilt and that feeling of panic, this then fuels and adds um, to those negative feelings of powerlessness, anxiety, fear, low mood, and the cycle keeps on going. So one way to actually break this cycle 
is to be active. So believe it or not, introducing some form of activity into your day actually breaks this cycle because if you're able to then do that activity, it reduces those feelings of guilt. It reduces that feeling of panic. And because of this, it actually makes you feel more able and more capable to actually deal with the current situation. So when we mean be active, it doesn't necessarily mean uh, maybe running 50 miles per day. Um, it could be anything from just doing more activity in your house. It could be a few stretches. It could just be something as simple as maybe cleaning and just something where you're actively doing something during your day. So we will be speaking about some of the common changes that people have experienced during this pandemic. So you know, interpersonal conflict, change of routine and activity, inability to socialize with friends and family, working from home, worry of catching the virus, worry about even going shopping, organizing childcare, living with uncertainty, isolation, and worry about your job or your studies. So one of the main questions I do have for everyone are what are some of the changes that you have experienced? So this may or may not be listed on the slide. And you know, some of the changes we have experienced could be very personal and they do differ from one individual to another. Um, so yeah, just so um, write down your responses in the chat and um, Del um, Delia could read them out. Okay, so um, we have one answer here. It says um, loads of changes, but one of the things I have missed most is not being able to go out for Sunday brunch and meeting friends. Um, we have another one, um, not being able to see grandchildren and children. I think that's quite a um, common answer. So it seems that one, um, some of the um, similarities between your answers so far is, you know, that inability to meet family and friends um, and even just going outside. And um, we could definitely be feeling these changes and it's very normal, especially since we are um, literally in lockdown inside our own homes and where we were so used to seeing people that we would usually see on maybe a day-to-day -day basis or weekly basis and have that um, you know, that interpersonal interaction, that communication with other people, and that just suddenly being stopped, um, that definitely does induce quite a lot of stress. I think we just had another one, Melissa. Um, lack of control and choice over our, our own lives and decisions. Um, and having to think about everything before I do it because things have to be done differently. <laughs> That's a good one. Most definitely. So um, again, all of these um, huge changes in our lives, um, not really knowing how to even do things at the moment, it could be quite confusing. Um, you know, are, am I meant to be doing this? Am I not meant to be doing this? Um, do I have to do this differently? So, you know, it could, it is also this kind of time of our lives where we could feel a lot of confusion on top of all those negative feelings that we just discussed in the earlier slide. Um, it seems like those are all the comments. Okay, so um, as you could see on the slide, this is the image um, of the stress bucket. So this is actually a metaphor describing how all these changes that we have just discussed could influence our stress. So imagine that the size of the bucket is representing um, our own vulnerability to stress. So one person's size of the bucket could be bigger, while another person's could be smaller. It does vary from each individual, depending on how much stress an individual is able to deal with. So um, imagine that um, in this scenario, water is representing stress. So as water flows into the bucket, if this bucket begins to become really, really full and the water reaches the brim of the bucket, it would overflow. 
and when the water overflows the bucket what would happen is you know all of these different problems would occur such as becoming quite snapping you know snappy so maybe making snappy decisions or being snappy towards other people it could also trigger the stress response also known as the fight or flight response so this is when we experience things such as increased heart rate increased breathing rate really tense muscles um, and the stress response is, if activated for a very long time, does have negative impacts on our physical and emotional health. Um, it could also cause, if the bucket overflows, we could also experience feelings of frustration and possibly becoming quite angry or confrontational. And on the contrary, it could also cause us to just say yes to everyone else's requests and leave us to actually begin to neglect ourselves. So these are all the negative impacts of when we are experiencing so much stress and we're not effectively dealing with it. So on the left-hand side of the bucket, you could see that there is a tap. So if the tap was open, this would mean that the water inside the bucket would empty out and there is no chance of the water actually overflowing the bucket. So the only time that this tap would be open is if we have good coping strategies that help us to effectively deal and manage that stress that we are experiencing. Now, if the tap is closed, that means that we actually have bad coping strategies to effectively deal with that stress. So um, in reality, because we're not actually dealing with that stress in an appropriate way for ourselves, this is when that bucket overflows and we experience all those problems that I just discussed. So what we're going to be speaking about today is how you know, all those changes that we just described of um, how this lockdown has actually influenced us and all those changes and how those changes are influencing the stress flowing into our own stress buckets. And we're also going to be describing and talking about good and bad coping strategies to deal with the stress. So um, this is just a really, really nice quote. So you may not be able to control every situation and its outcome but you can control how you deal with it so um, this is really representative of the current situation you know the lockdown situation we can't actually control that situation right now but the best thing we can do for ourselves is just control how we as individuals deal with that situation to just help ourselves deal with that stress that we may be feeling from all those various changes so this image is actually representing the five areas of well-being so physical social mental emotional and spiritual so these five areas of well-being actually keep us balanced in life and if we are able to positively maintain our five areas of well-being this actually increases our resilience and our ability to effectively deal with difficult situations and stressful situations um, not only this, but they do definitely improve our physical and our emotional well-being in the long term. So um, I'll just go into a bit more detail about what these five areas of well-being actually represent. So physical area of well-being. So this is just really any form of activity that really helps our physical selves. So, you know, such as getting enough sleep, carrying out exercise, eating healthily. Our social well-being, this is just represented by our ability to um, speak to other people, socialise. Um, our mental well-being, so this is anything that keeps our brain active. So, you know, things such as carrying out puzzles or learning a new recipe. These are all things that really, really keep our brain active and it promotes that mental well-being. Our emotional well-being is our ability to really understand and acknowledge our emotions and to process those emotions. Our spiritual well-being. So this could be for some people, this is religion. For some people, this is yoga. For some people, it could be just carrying out a small act of kindness during the day. So um, our spiritual well-being does differ from person to person as well. And again, spiritual well-being is just something that brings us that feeling of peace and contentment and that
Hello everyone, we've lost Melissa's sound again. Um, we're, it's, I can see that a few people are asking if it's them, it's not It's not them, it says, oh, it's Melissa. Um, I'll see if we can get her back again. Noel, do you think you might be able to keep going for a bit? <laughs> Okay, um, if you want to take over, I'll just sort out the presentation for you in a moment. If you can keep speaking to that slide, that would be great. Okay, so, um, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, uh, technical glitches, technical difficulties, but uh, hopefully up, up, up until now, you've been able to um, um, stay with us. We were looking at the five areas of well-being, and uh, with with that, uh, just wondering uh, and just inviting you maybe to, to think about which areas for you are, are well rehearsed, well practiced, but then which areas may may have been neglected, uh, where, whereas now during the lockdown, might we be able to develop some of those other areas? Uh, the five areas, are, we sometimes use an image with these workshops where uh, the five areas are considered to be pillars. So if you imagine a roof uh, being supported by five pillars, the, the roof is fairly stable. If one of those pillars is removed, then still fairly stable. If two of the pillars are removed, then we're kind of worrying, especially if it's the two pillars to the left or two to the right. If three pillars become removed, then we're really worried because the roof is potentially going to fall down. And um, the, what, what, we, what we're uh, inviting us to consider is all five of these areas um, actually support your well-being house, your emotional well-being house. Physical uh, well-being, as Melissa mentioned, sleeping, uh, nutrition, uh, caring for your for your body uh, is massive. Um, we live in a society where gyms previously were open 24 hours, um, so we make a big emphasis on that. So maybe for some of us, the being able to uh, do go for go for walks and runs, being in the countryside, it's been kind of difficult with the lockdown. Things are gradually easing, but we've struggled because that aspect of our well-being has was limited some of us the social side of things where i think one of our contributors was saying going out and meeting with friends uh, grand grandchildren uh, sons and daughters having those uh, pub lunches or or going for country walks gathering as groups of friends or participating in sporting activities that's been limited so that pillar as it were has been withdrawn for, for, for some of us. But I wonder if, say, if those two pillars are withdrawn, how we might expand on maybe the other three so that the, 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 our well-being is still supported adequately by the other three until the ones that are missing are able to be put back in place. So mental, uh, thinking about reading, thinking about learning new skills, thinking about sharing information and ideas with other people, emotional, how often do we take account of our own emotional well-being? Oftentimes the lives we lead are so fast and so intense and so got to get to the next one, I don't have time to think about the last, um, that we probably don't take as much account of our emotional well-being and as Melissa mentioned, spiritual. So for many, practicing a faith is, is actually quite a significant. Many people have found that their faith is what is holding them and strengthening them uh, through these difficult times. But if a, 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 an organized uh, faith isn't for you, what about values? What about those things that you believe in and support in, things around justice, things around um, caring for animals, things around the environment? Um, one of the things I know I've noticed is that I haven't heard any aeroplanes in a long while, and I wonder uh, that that's an amazing thing. The skies are just quiet except for birds, and we're, you know, that is uh, spiritual. 
the dawn chorus. Uh, I've been hearing the dawn chorus over the last few weeks, and that's an amazing thing too. So to what extent maybe are some of those areas uh, uh, that we can develop, the areas that are limited or uh, those pillars, if you want, that may have been lost due to the lockdown, how might we develop some of those other pillars to, 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 to bear the weight and to keep us uh, our well-being um, strong and supported. Maybe, maybe if if we can get a couple of uh, responses, maybe some things that uh, that you can do or have been doing under maybe one of those headings. So choose one of those headings, um, and then maybe something that you can do to develop that area. Maybe it wasn't as strong before, but you're learning, or something that you've learned over the last few weeks that's allowed you to develop that area for yourself. So give you a couple of minutes to to just send through some messages to us. Okay, so we've got a few coming through now. Um, just bear with me. Okay, here we have one. Um, on the social side of things, um, really just being aware that I need to make an effort to be in touch with friends and family and grabbing my phone to FaceTime them. Another is um, I've been exercising every morning and it sets me up for the day. Another one is contacting people I that live a long way from and don't have to contact normally. Another one is physical. Um, I have been doing a lot of aerobics in the morning. NHS 1U, it's great. Another one, um, I would like to work on my physical well-being as I feel that I have been affected by this lockdown. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, next one, physical. Doing yoga every morning has made a big difference in my mental state and well-being. Another one is I've been looking at my time management to reshape my life, but it isn't sufficient. A friend got in touch and said it's a good time to slob out and that really helped the way I feel. Next one, um, it's been quite easy for me to avoid people when I feel down, but FaceTiming a friend always helps. Um, and another one, riding my bike with my son. That's definitely something I've started doing is riding my bike. I find it fun. Okay, that seems to be it for now. Okay. Um... Shall we go on to the next slide? Okay, perfect. Um, so um, the next slide was, I think, face COVID. Um, so the face COVID acronym was actually developed by Dr. Ross Harris. And um, this acronym has actually, um, you know, various different steps on how we could effectively deal with this lockdown situation so that we could deal with it and decrease that stress and those negative emotions that we may be feeling. So um, some of those, I'll just read out what that acronym is and then what we're going to actually be doing in the rest of this um, webinar is describing different um, strategies that actually relate to each aspect of this acronym. So um, F for focus on what's in your control. A, acknowledge your thoughts and feelings. C, come back into your body. E, engage in what you're doing. C, committed action. O for opening up. B for values. I for identify resources. And D, disinfect and distance. So um, what we're going to see is on the next slide, um, which is just talking about moderating media intake. So this really does focus on the F aspect of the acronym, which is focus on what's in your control. So at the moment, 
um, we need to definitely be aware that we need to have, um, firstly, we need to be able to radically accept that things are beyond our control at the moment related to this crisis. We cannot control the government decisions on how long the lockdown is going to last. We cannot control maybe how fast the virus is spreading or what's going to happen next regards a virus. But what we what we can do is definitely focus on what's in our control. So one of those things is moderating media intake. So um, I would just like everyone to answer this question in the chat box. So how is this news exposure helping your well-being? And in particular, I mean all this negative news exposure about the virus. So, you know, every single day we're hearing about how many people are dying from the virus, how many people are being affected by the virus. And we're hearing that this lockdown is going to be extended even further. Um, you know, we're hearing that we can't really go out and see our, our um, people that we care about and our loved ones. We can't really go out as freely as we would like. So how is all this negative news exposure impacting your well-being? Um, Okay, so we've had one come through so far. Um, useful to know, but not good if that is all one thinks about. Most definitely. So um, in particular, what's really, really important is to just highlight, as highlighted by that comment, is that while listening to the media is useful in terms of finding out some information and important information, you know, especially when there are announcements made to the whole country. Those are definitely things that we do need to know about. However, if we are listening to the news um, during a large chunk of our day, this could actually have such a huge negative impact on our well-being. Okay, um, Melissa, we just had another answer. Um, I find the tone of some of the reporters is not calm, but more negative. Most definitely. And, you know, just that tone of um, negativity really, really does impact our well-being because one person's, um, I guess, negative or irritable or frustrated moods could definitely wear off on ourselves. So, um, you know, if we're seeing that negativity and hearing that negativity in their tone, that could also induce even more fear and even more worry or low mood into us. And we've got another two. I think we'll probably stop after that, Melissa. Um, okay. So we have, I try to just read the newspaper in the morning um, and leave it at that. Um, we have another one. I don't watch or read any virus news, but even TV ads are virus related. I've noticed that as well, even on the radio. Um, and then we've got one more, journalists and presenters' language is loaded to drive up anxiety and hopelessness. That's a really good one. Yes, and um, that comment actually directly relates to what we are speaking about during this slide. So, you know, all of this news definitely does increase those feelings of anxiety, hopelessness, low mood, fear. And, you know, this really does have negative impacts on our well-being and, you know, it demotivates us and we could end up finding ourselves back inside that lethargy cycle that we were speaking about. So, you know, just moderating your media intake, even if you don't completely stop, because it is very understandable that you do also want to keep updated about the news. But um, just reducing the amount of news you do watch or read during the day really does reduce those negative feelings and improves your well-being by promoting those positive sense of well-being. I mean, positive feelings and, you know, being able to think of things other than the virus. So um, the next slide is going to be, to we're actually going to be talking about the concept of mindfulness. So, um, Sarah, I think it's the slide before. Sorry, thank you. Um, so this slide actually focuses on the ACE aspect of the FACE COVID acronym. So you know, acknowledging your thoughts and feelings, coming back into your body and engaging what you're doing. So um, with mindfulness, the main thing to really think about is due to this lockdown situation and this pandemic, it is very, very easy to find ourselves ruminating 
about you know the outcome of the situations and experiencing all these negative feelings and because of this ruminating which is ruminating is another word for overthinking about the situation because of this we may actually find ourselves stuck inside this negative emotional loop so as you could see on the slide there is an example of a negative emotional loop on there so you know experiencing negative thoughts influences and causes negative emotions which causes negative physical sensations and behaviors so when we definitely do find ourselves stuck in this negative emotional loop it's very hard to come out of that so one of the ways to actually remove ourselves from that negative emotional loop is to practice mindfulness so first the first step to do this is to really observe and acknowledge your thoughts and feelings within that situation so when you are in that moment where you realize that you're ruminating or experiencing all these negative feelings and thoughts just take a step back and just observe and acknowledge those feelings and thoughts what feelings am i experiencing right now what thoughts am i having just ask yourself those two simple questions and this really helps to promote an understanding of maybe why you're feeling those things and why you're thinking those things. Secondly, with acknowledging your thoughts and feelings, we must remember that you know negative feelings are also, um, I guess, a normal part of the human experience. And what's really, really important to remember is that our feelings are impermanent. Now, what that means is that what we may be feeling in one minute may actually change in the next minute because our feelings are always changing. And if we remember this, um, during that time where we do find ourselves ruminating, overthinking, and you know, just feeling very overwhelmed by all these negative um, emotions, just remind ourselves that, you know, I am not always going to feel this negative emotion. And that's you acknowledging the impermanence of your emotions. Um, secondly, um, another way of observing and acknowledging your thoughts and feelings is to actually let go of the need to control your emotions. So, um, you know, it's very common where if we actually latch onto an emotion or over identify with an emotion or um, the opposite, if we disregard and try to ignore an emotion, what we may find is that emotion could actually become amplified and, you know, that keeps that negative emotional loop going. So what we really need to do is just observe and acknowledge those thoughts and feelings, really understand where they're coming from and just um, allow them to be there. And we would also experience that feeling and knowing that they will also leave. Those negative feelings will leave. They won't always be there. So next, ask yourself, how and where in my body do I experience this? so the reason that you do this is because um, our bodies could actually sometimes tell us about how we may be feeling about a certain situation and this is because we do actually have a mind-body connection so this mind-body connection and establishing this connection really helps us to have a better ability to understand our thoughts and feelings and next just ask yourself this self-compassion question what do i need right now and asking yourself this question, um, it just really, really helps you to identify those needs that you do have to nourish your well-being. And then just create a list of the needs that you have. And creating a list really, really just helps you to just plan how you could meet those needs. So for example, on the side you could see, if you have been more inactive, maybe you just need to do a few stretches or go for a walk. So maybe if you're feeling very, very anxious, it could be engaging in self-soothing exercises to really calm yourself down. Now, if we go on to the next slide, we're going to see some mindfulness and grounding techniques. So um, the core concept of mindfulness and grounding is to bring ourselves back to the present moment. So where we may find ourselves ruminating or overthinking about the situations, we're actually not in the present moment. We're actually carried away in our thoughts, thinking about the past or the future. So with mindfulness exercises in particular, they use the breath as an anchor to bring ourselves back to the present moment. 
So when we're feeling stressed and you know all this ruminating and overthinking, um, if, we, um, if you remember the cycle, if we have negative thoughts, this causes negative feelings, this causes negative behaviors and negative physical sensations. Within that, that would also mean that the stress response is triggered because of all this negativity. During the stress response, because we experience things such as increased heart rate, increased breathing rate, really um, tense muscles, um, through mindfulness and you know doing breathing exercises in particular, if we are able to slow down our breathing by using techniques such as a square breathing technique, this really counteracts the stress response. So through slowing down our breathing rate, automatically our heart rate has to slow down as well. And then our muscles become more relaxed. And because now we've counteracted that stress response, this allows us that space to take a step back and observe and acknowledge our thoughts and emotions that we may be experiencing during that, um, I guess, overthinking episode. Um, grounding techniques. Um, is also um, a really good way to bring yourself back to the present moment. So especially when you may find that you're carried away by these thoughts, you know, the grounding technique really helps you to establish um, that sense of being back inside your own body. So we do have some example mindfulness and grounding techniques on the slide. So the first one is a square breathing technique. So with this, um, it is completely up to you if you do want to take part in this. So um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to breathe in for four seconds. We'll hold that breath for four seconds, breathe out for four seconds, hold for four seconds, and we'll go through this cycle three times. So we'll be starting in, we'll be starting, I guess, now. So breathe in, two, three, four, and hold. Breathe out, hold, breathe in, hold, breathe out, hold, breathe in. Hold, two, three, four. Breathe out, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. And we'll go through the cycle one more time. Breathe in, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Breathe out, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four. Okay, so that exercise just really, really focused on slowing down that breathing rate. So, you know, taking four seconds to breathe in and even holding that breath there, breathing out for four seconds and holding again. So that, again, is a form of mindfulness that just really helps to, it uses the breath, again, as an anchor to counteract that stress response. The five, four, three, two, one grounding technique. So this is something that um, you could do anywhere in your own time. So, you know, um, listing five things you could see, four things you could touch, three things you can hear, two things you can taste, and one thing you can smell. So with this though, the um, key thing to remember is that you're not just stating the things that you could see, touch, hear, taste, and smell, but you have to describe them in a lot of detail. And what this does is because you're really describing it in detail, you are now engaging your brain. And because you're engaging your brain in that exercise, it immediately stops that process of overthinking and ruminating. And it's bringing you to focus on your environment and the present moment. And again, it brings you back into your body because these are all um, things that you experience with your five senses. Okay, so if we go on to the next slide. So we're going to be talking about setting yourself a routine. So the reason why this is very, very important is simply because um, 
due to the current lockdown situation, we may find that our routines and, you know, our I guess our daily activities have just completely changed, you know, where maybe we used to wake up early in the morning, go to work or go to um, study, um, or for some people it would be bringing the children to school. Um, it changes from person to person, but, you know, going about our daily routines and now suddenly that has all stopped. And we now have to be able to adapt to what our lives are now, you know, for maybe um, working mothers, um, and fathers, you know, who maybe used to go to work and their children used to go to school, now maybe working from home and taking care of the children must be a very, very difficult task. So, um, you know, these are all different things that have changed and we have experienced that change of routine and we need to be able to adapt to it. But setting yourself a routine now during lockdown is just a really, really useful way of bringing back that sense of normality. So even if it is not the exact same as your routine before the lockdown, um, your new routine routine could actually incorporate all those adaptations that you have needed to make um, to, you know, fulfill all those different needs that you now have to think about. So, you know, with this, really focusing on planning your day with priority tasks as well as fun activities. So the reason for this is because if you only do priority tasks, Sometimes those priority tasks could be quite boring and you don't really look forward to your day and you're just like, ugh, I don't really want to do this all day. But if you, um, you know, include some fun activities, um, you also have something to look forward to during your day. Um, not only this, but um, when you think about your routine, one of the things to really think about is um, also incorporating those five areas of well-being. So, you know, where in your routine could you maybe incorporate taking care of your physical well-being? or your social well-being or your emotional well-being so all of these different things um if you're able to incorporate those into your routine that's also increasing your ability to effectively deal with this lockdown so um overall the main concept from this slide is just to highlight that routine does add that structure to your day it reduces those negative feelings and if we go back to the uh, i can't talk to the lethargy cycle um where we found that if we do nothing we feel guilty and that adds to those negative feelings even more where we set ourselves a routine we're less likely to be unproductive during our day and that immediately reduces those feelings of guilt um on top of those feelings of you know anxiety fear low mood so um it promotes a positive sense of well-being so with setting yourself a routine another thing to think about is also your values so our values actually act as a compass that guides us through life and what we mean by this is when we carry out activities that are actually in line with our values we are firstly more likely to enjoy it and we this also promotes our well-being so um for example um if i really placed a huge value on maybe um i guess achieving then maybe one of um, the things that I would include in my routine is to maybe read a educational book or watch a TED talk or um, maybe it's achieving a skill in cooking. So maybe it's learning a new recipe. So, you know, our values definitely do underline the actions that we carry out during the day. Um, if we go on to the next slide. Um, so we're also going to be discussing SMART goals in relation to setting ourselves a routine. So some food for thought, um, if you could all write inside the chat. Um, are there any tasks that you have been wanting to complete but haven't been able to prior to the lockdown? Okay, um, while we're waiting, Melissa, I definitely have one I'd like to share. Um, I've managed to um, um, kind of get my balcony decorated so I can sit out there and enjoy some of the sunshine that we have. So that's really good. All right, we yeah, have definitely. another one. Um, deep clean um, It's another one. And another one is time to read a book. Another one is, haha, spring cleaning for sure. 
<laughs> I think we've all been cleaning out the cupboards and um, most definitely finding all sorts of things. <laughs> definitely. So you know, um, deep cleaning, spring cleaning, um, sorting out your balcony. All of these things are things that maybe we were actually putting off. Um, doing prior to the lockdown because our lives are so so busy and now we actually do have that time to do that um, there's another one more bike rides as good exercise while still staying distant from other people definitely so you know being more active um, and engaging in more physical activity so all of these things are actually um, just examples of activities and tasks that we are actually able to do now um, compared to things that we were actually unable to do before and what's really important is if maybe there are more things and more tasks that um, you did want to do before but you still haven't been able to complete then maybe um, using SMART goals as a way of achieving those so you know with SMART goals this really means um, making your goal specific so what exactly is it that you want to do making it measurable so how are you going to quantify um, I guess that task or that activity um, attainable and relevant so um, is this goal realistic do you have the um, I guess the resources to carry out the activity and is it relevant to you also is it in line with your values um, and time-based you know um, give yourself a deadline of when you would like to complete the task but with this also be very very careful and make sure that your smart goals are definitely achievable um, you know don't make them so unrealistic that when that um, time comes in which you should have completed it um, you haven't completed it and then that causes more negative feelings so you know just maybe making your smart goals small and then building upon those um, one step at a time and then eventually you would have achieved um, the bigger goal um if we go on to the next slide please sarah so um the next slide so this is just talking about writing a diary and the reason why this is important is because it definitely does help to relieve stress not only this but it does keep your thoughts organized and it really helps you to process um, you know those thoughts and feelings especially if you find it really difficult to speak about your emotions and during this lockdown where um, our negative emotions may be quite heightened in addition to those feelings of stress writing a diary is definitely a good way to deal with those emotions and you know you're still mindfully dealing with those emotions um also with um diaries have I don't know if anyone has heard of gratitude journals, but these are one really good way of um, you know, helping yourself maintain that positive mindset. So with gratitude journals, it's just really thinking about maybe three things that went really well during your day or positive things that went well during your day um, um, or you know, positive aspects of your life. And this really, really helps you to focus on those positive things. Um, especially during a difficult time such as this lockdown and um, I could definitely tell you a good story about gratitude journals so um, I actually had a colleague of mine who was practicing gratitude journals and um, she stated that when she first started um, doing the gratitude journal it was very easy and she had loads of things to write about you know maybe the bus came early or um, she had donuts for lunch I don't know um, but then as the two weeks passed, um, she found it a lot more difficult to, um, you know, fill in the gratitude journal because she started saying things such as, you know, I feel like I'm repeating myself and I'm just saying the same things. And what that really encouraged her to do is she found that she started um, noticing the smaller positive things in life. You know, she said how she started noticing more when the birds would be chirping or singing um she would um maybe notice things that she never noticed before and she would be grateful for even the smallest things such as being able to see um so you know it really really encouraged her to maintain that sense of positive well-being um so hopefully um you all definitely find the that i guess a very sim i guess a positive experience with writing a diary or gratitude journal too um the next slides please sarah 
So um, we do have a list of resources that um, you could use for help. So I'll just give you um, around a minute just to have a look at what we do have on the slide. So what we will be doing is um, we would also be emailing you the presentation slides to um, to you. So hopefully you do have this slide will be there so you could have a closer look at these resources. And um, yeah, so that's definitely really, really helpful. And the next slide, please. And finally, so this is the D aspect of the face COVID acronym. So, you know, disinfect and distance. So please um, regularly wash your hands for at least 20 seconds and practice social distancing. And, you know, um, food for thought, actually practicing these two simple things is definitely in line with the value of kindness, because not only are you um, caring for your own health, but you're caring for the health of others as well. And um, thank you. If you have any further questions, please um, email us at onesworthwellbeing at swlstg.nhs.uk. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you, Melissa. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I apologise again for my internet issues to everybody. Uh -huh. <laughs> We've had a um, few comments here. So thank you, Melissa. Um, and thanks so much from someone else. Um, thank you. Can we have the slides for reference? I think you've confirmed that you will be sending those. Yes, most definitely. I'll be emailing you all the slides. Fantastic. And I think that's all we have for now. I oh, know we just had another one that was very helpful. Thanks. Thank you so much. Um, and if you do have any questions, please feel free to ask now. Um, or you could also um, send a um, your question to that email that was inside the slide. Hi Melissa, I've got a question. It's Sarah. Um, are you going to have you got other workshops that people can sign up to on the website? Um, yes, definitely. So um, if you search Talk Wandsworth um, in Eventbrite, what you would come across is the various different workshops that we are offering at the moment via telephone. Um, so um, it is one to one at the moment due to the lockdown situation. Um, so we do offer a huge variety of different workshops such as self-care and relaxation, self-confidence and assertiveness, managing anger and irritability. Um, oh, there's so many, I can't even think of all of them. We do also have long-term conditions workshops um, such as um, managing well-being with chronic pain, with COPD, with um, heart disease. We also have a coping with stress workshop, um, reaching your potential workshop, and many, many more. Um, I could also um, send a link to our Eventbrite page while I, um, when I send the um, the attachment of this presentation. We do also have a preparing for parenthood workshop. That's good. Um, I think we're okay to wrap it up because we were due to finish at four. Um, but if anyone has any final questions, do put them in the chat box. Or I believe they've probably got your contact details already, have they, Melissa? When signing um, up. Um. Yes, definitely. So um, I did send everyone that um 
the email um, to actually access this workshop. So you could also e send an email to that, but preferably if you could send your questions to Wandsworth Wellbeing um, at swlstg.nhs.uk. And that would also be in the slides when I sent in the attachment. Great. Um, and the other thing that we'd like people to tell us about is feedback about the workshop. I think you've already said that, but <laughs> it would be really helpful um, to know how it's gone, whether it's been useful um, and that kind of thing. So I think um, we might end there. That's OK. Definitely. Thank you, everyone, for joining and listening. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you.